we rise up as he has established in this place the standard of godliness the standard of holiness the standard of righteousness who, which the lord has established in this place shall continue till jesus comes in the name of Jesus, we declare the lordship of Jesus Christ over this assembly. All we are saying, Jesus is Lord. All we are saying, Jesus is Lord. Yes. Uh, all we are saying. International 
the spirit of the Lord is doing great things all over the world through ADMI. I mean, you need to hear some of the testimonies. Your mind will almost blow apart. And it is God that is doing it. We give thanks to God. So please support ADMI in whatsoever way the Holy Spirit is laying upon your mind. Or you make up your mind to say, I won't be part of this. Let heaven record that I am actively supporting apostolic discipleship movement. And it shall be well with you. You will prosper by it in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to thank God that this morning the Lord has prepared one of our mommies in the house on behalf of the glory women's team she is the one the holy spirit has handpicked to use to preach to us today and i'm talking of our sister and our mommy dr mrs shade akinsete she's already seated in front here so immediately after the glory voices uh, ministration she will come up and declare the counsel of god unto us praise the lord glory voices okay before glory voices please sorry i want us to take this uh, song in our information bulletin leaning on the everlasting arms when we come to church like this as we worship the lord as we glorify his name he wants to bless us he wants to bless us so we must learn to lean on him lean on him hear his word let him lay his hand upon us and bless us. So you will sing this song as your confession of faith. Shall we be on our feet, please?
always be our Lord in Jesus name please be seated
are going through, it does not matter the situation that is facing you. We are going to shout that name several times. I will prompt you and you will shout Jesus until you lose your voice. Are you ready? Are you ready? When I ask you to shout that name, you say Jesus. Are you ready? Let somebody shout the name of Jesus. Oh! 
the name of Jesus was yet praise him again but one question came to my mind did he hear you call him are you in the right position to call that name Jesus that was a question that kept coming to my mind while we sang the song and if you have the right to call the name of Jesus even if you don't by the virtue that you're still outside the court this morning he will hear you as you call on him and say have mercy on me he will truly hear you in Jesus name amen to stand in this place and represent the women I believe that what God laid in but like I said we'll still worship God the more and glorify the name of Jesus in his presence and before we begin to talk about what the Lord has put in my heart to discuss today I like the glory voices the Lord bless you real good and renew your strength and in the song for us that says I stand amazed in your presence there is nothing you cannot do and the Lord will do awesome things works of righteousness in his presence today in the name of Jesus You're free to worship the Lord as you will, because as you worship Him, as truly His presence will come down. Oh yes, you stand amazed in Your presence. Oh yes, there's nothing You cannot do, Lord. I stand amazed in Your presence. have come to meet with and meet with us in Jesus name we have worshipped and prayed amen praise the Lord Hallelujah. we're going to be talking about in his presence and I think I have some confidence because I can see the people that I know who are sitting right in front I a bit at some point God told me you're going to be speaking to your brothers and sisters and you're going to be talking to fathers and mothers so there's no need to be afraid 
So the Lord has granted me that grace. So that's why I'm standing a little bit still and I'm not shaking. And I know that the Lord will help me and help all of us to attain to what he wants us to attain to today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Numbers chapter 17 and verse 1 to 10. Numbers 17 from verse 1 to 10. The book of Numbers chapter 17 from verse 1 to 10. And I'll read quickly. And the Lord's 12 rods, write each man's name on his rod, and you shall write Aaron's name on the rod. Then you shall place them in the tabernacle of meeting before the testimony where I meet with you. And it shall be that the rod of the man who I chose, choose will blossom. Thus I will read myself of the complaints of the children of Israel which they make against you. So Moses spoke to the children of Israel and each of their leaders gave him a rod apiece. For each leader, according to their father's houses, twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses placed the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had sprouted. In some version it says had boarded and put, or put forth boards, had produced blossoms and yielded ripe almonds. Then Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord to all the children of Israel. And they looked and each man took his rod. And the Lord said to Moses, bring Eros rod back before the testimony to be kept as a sign against the rebels that you may put their complaints away from me lest they die praise the lord in jesus name may the lord bless the reading of his word to our hearts in the name of jesus by way of introduction i'll just tell us a little bit of what happened in chapter 16 and there had been some rebellion going on in the camp in Israel at that point in time. They were still on their journey to the um, promised land. And there were th this group of people who were, part of them were actually Levites too. Korah was a Levite. Datan and Abiram came from the tribe of Reuben. That's in Numbers chapter 16 from verse 1 to 2. We won't read that. You can put that down and go home and read. And the entire congregation of Israel also at some point began to murmur against Moses, particularly because they felt that they also had right to become high priests like Aaron. So in Numbers chapter 16 verse 41, the entire congregation of Israel murmured and said that uh, this thing that happened to Korah and Dathan, I'm actually skipping because I believe that you know some of this background um, stories. What happened to them was as a result of what Aaron and Moses had done. That's why the ground swallowed them up. And they all murmured. And in order for God to settle that once and for all, he had to do a miracle. He had to do something very important that will steal the mouth of those people who were rebelling. I believe that the Lord will help each one of us. There shall be no rebel amidst us in the name of Jesus so they brought, what God told them to do is to bring the rods of the 12 tribes into his presence. And let's see what will happen in his presence. So they brought it into his presence. That is the ark of testimony. And they began to, you know, look, look at the things that will happen in the presence of God. Before we look at some of the things that will happen, particularly in verse 7 of chapter 17, I'd like us to at least understand a little bit of what his presence is and somehow it, it it became a little bit baffling when i was actually searching to find out you know to write a meaning of god's presence and i think it is better felt better experienced than somebody just dictating what dictionary has to say so i went and just summarized i think god's presence is god's atmosphere surrounding go with us then do not send us up, up, up from here. 
So it is an atmosphere that we feel as we're speaking with Moses. The other thing God said to him is that I will give you rest, also an evidence of staying or dwelling in the presence of God. Someone who dwelt in 13, and I'll read quickly. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of a daughter before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. But they had no child, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priests before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when and fell and fear fell upon him but the angel said to him do not be afraid Zacharias for your prayer is named John and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth praise the Lord that is the story of Zacharias and so God we see him also being spoken to by an angel in fact in verse 19 the angel said my name is Gabriel I stand in the presence of God. We also see one thing that happened to him while he was in God's presence. The Bible said that I have heard your prayer. That is in verse 13. So his long term prayer has been heard. And that calls to mind that adventure somebody is thinking in their mind, I have been in God's presence all this while and it seems as if my prayers haven't been heard. Please queue up behind Zachariah. The Bible says that his prayers were hard. So he had been praying for a long time. One day came while he was still in God's presence that his prayers were heard. And God will hear your prayer in Jesus' name. God brought him great joy. God told him again in verse 14 that he has obtained joy and gladness. And everybody around him will receive that same joy and gladness. That's one thing that we can experience in the presence of God. That's about Zacharias. What about Jesus Christ? This year we have been asked to follow in his steps. How do we know Jesus dwelt in his presence? Ah yes, the simple answer but he was the son of God. Yes, he was the son of God dwelling in flesh at the time he was here. Bible says that he rose up a great while early to do what? To cultivate the presence of his father. Again, that's in Mark chapter 135. In John 11, 42, Jesus himself affirms that God hears his prayers. That was at the time he was raising Lazarus from the dead. He said, I thank you because you always hear me. May the Lord always hear somebody today in Jesus' name. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, and also Matthew 17, 5, Matthew 3, 17, Matthew 5, uh, Matthew 17, 5, Mark 1, 11, Luke 3, 22, 2 Peter 1, 17. I'll read that again. Matthew 3, 17, Matthew 17, 5. Mark 1 11, Luke 3 22, 2 Peter 1 17. There was a voice that came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. That's because he was in his presence. And like I said earlier on, if we have been asked at the backdrop, it's there consistently for us to see that we ought to walk in his presence. That is by saying that following in the presence, in the, in the path of Jesus, we will obtain his presence. So we ought to also do the things that our perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ, did to remain in his presence. Now returning back to 
to Math, uh, Numbers chapter 11, uh, Numbers chapter 17. Let's go back and see the kind of things that happens in the presence of God. This miracle, the miracle was actually done to stop a complaint, to stop rebellion, but in his presence. So in Numbers chapter 17, verse Aaron's rod. And I'll read again. The Bible says, And now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi had sprouted and put forth uh, but had put and yielded ripe almonds. That's of a tree. It's, it's important to know that this rod, they had, they had their names written on it, so it signified a tribe. And today, you are in his presence. You are here even this morning. Maybe somebody even dragged you to church or just invited you and you are here today. Just consider yourself to be blessed that you have come into his presence. It says this word signifies a tribe. It signifies, it can signify a person. It can signify some people. Because they took the word from these 12 tribes. They actually took Aaron's word. And that was what was taken into the presence of God. And I'll just give us a little background to this word. Remember that it was the same word in Exodus chapter 7 verse 10 that turned into a serpent and swallowed up the other serpents of the magician. That was Aaron's word. It was also Aaron's word in Exodus chapter 7 verse 19 that was stretched over the waters that actually became blood. In Exodus 8, 5 and Exodus 8, 17, this same blood performed the miracle of bringing forth the frogs and also the lights at the point in time when that miracle needed to be done. However, since then, that rod had been something that Aaron carried. I don't know the entire story in between that time when all the miracles had happened in Israel, in Egypt rather, and until they got to this wilderness and this was happening at this point in time. But we can, we can, we can infer that that rod, after it swallowed up, the rod became a rod again. It wasn't a snake. It wasn't a serpent. It wasn't anything that they worshipped. So it must have been a dry, ordinary rod that he was carrying around. He had that rod. The rod was made of almond tree, like we know. The rod was old and dry. Those are some of the characteristics of the rod. And that's not only the rod of Aaron. It was also the rod of the twelve tribes. That means that that rod, if it's dry, it has no sap in it. Usually when you take a fresh branch and you crush it, some liquid come out. Yeah, it's usually whitish in color, in color called the sap. But something happened to all these 12 rods. All the rods were placed in God's presence. 12 of them. And God says something. He did something. It is very important for us to understand that all of that that happened, happened in less than 24 hours. And I'd just like us to look at a little bit of the characteristics of the Agron tree. If the slideshow can come on, please. Looking at the characteristics of an almond tree. So an almond tree starts producing fruit when it's about three years old. Usually it becomes, it begins to bear fruit properly between five and six years. Depending on the species, it can even go as far as 12 years old before it begins to fruit. The nuts, that is called the almond, matures in eight months after flowering. And flowering is the same as blossoming. And then it's, it's um, awesome to find out that to produce one almond, it needs about a gallon of water. You can go to the next slide. Now let's quickly just look at the rundown of that life cycle. So between November and February, almond trees produce buds. Between late February and early March, the tree begins to produce blossoms ready for pollination by bees. Between March and June, there is a transformation of the blossoms, the flowers, into the almond inside the shell or hole. And then between July and August, 
the hull begins to split open to allow the almond shell to start drying and then harvesting hours and today I decree in the name for you in Jesus and amen so we all know what buds are we know what flowers blossoms are and what fruits are so there's no need to start thinking about that I just want us to also remember that it is a miracle remember we say it because there's no way a dry rod ranch and maybe some somebody might have thought that could Moses have just gone into the tabernacle of witness overnight and quickly exchange it Assuming he even tried to do that, where will he find a rod that has all these three stages on it at the same time? It's impossible. He won't find a rod. We also know that it is a miracle because we have seen the growth process that it takes three years before a tree that is planted from seed begins to bear fruits. And it takes eight months to the market for food because almonds are nuts that people eat. And then again, so we, we, we say that in the presence of God, in the presence of the Elohim, of the eternal one, the uncreated Lord of all, in the presence of him who inhabits eternity, the one who says that a day is like a thousand years for him and a thousand years like a day before him, there is nothing that cannot happen. So when we were singing that song, it wasn't because we just wanted to gear ourselves up or warm ourselves to come to the point so that we can receive God's word. No, it's because that is the truth. There is nothing. There is nothing that cannot happen in the presence of God. So I'll also say that the presence of the birds, looking at that slide again, it's still there. The presence of all three stages, birds, blossom, and fruits at the same time signify that it is a miracle and that also signifies that there's going to be a continuous experience of blossoming and of fruiting may that be your portion in the name of Jesus that as you abide as you do the things that make you stay in God's presence that there will be a continuous boarding a flourishing will become part of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ so for me and I'm sure for you as well this miracle is notable it's a notable miracle anybody can try to write any theology or anything about it it is a notable miracle it is a permanent miracle because God told Moses in verse 10 take this rod and bring it back into his presence for a what a testimony for a witness it was an abiding miracle it was an undeniable miracle that's one thing we always say here no controversy it was a miracle that is without any controversy how graduates into stubbornness and ultimately graduates into rebellion may that not be your lot or mine in the name of jesus and that is why today we're going to correct anywhere there's any disobedience in our lives lest it takes us to the point when we come into god's presence and nothing happens about your life nothing happens about my life that will not be our lot in the name of jesus again rebellion is defiance and defiance can be open resistance bold disobedience is also tantamount to waywardness, indiscipline, misbehavior, misconduct, troublemaking, insubordination. And when somebody becomes rebellious, it means that his heart is, is growing callous. A heart that cannot yield, does not, does not have any sense, sensitivity any longer. A heart that is cold and stony, that's the kind of heart of a rebel a hardened heart and an indifferent heart but as you came to this place you did not come so that you become indifferent or remain indifferent if even if your estate has been that you have found that at some point in time you had rebelled against authority that was instituted particularly in the church against authority even at workplace sometimes some of the things that we'll do that causes or erodes the presence of God from us 
we want to say no to them today and bring ourselves back into the place where God will do what he will do so that the rod of Aaron can board so that your life my life can flourish again and can begin to yield ripe fruits it's amazing that that rod did not just yield a fruit that was maturing but it yielded ripe fruits and so shall it be for someone today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that's my short sermon and I want us to pray but the reason I have just passed through it fast is so that we can have some time in the presence of God to pray and we have already read so that we we will not have anything that hinders us from accessing God's presence continuously rebellion must be dealt with and in 1st Samuel 15 23 is a familiar scripture but I would like us to read it 1st Samuel 15 23 so that when we pray we will not just mutter words because we'll still pray that God will do awesome things and I know people will really pray it is also time to pray well when you want to take away rebellion from your heart or any form of disobedience. First Samuel 15 23 says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. So I'll just stop there. That is 23a. Rebellion in God's presence stubbornness disobedience is equated to what witchcraft and i'm sure if anybody screams from somewhere in the neighborhood and say they are the witch or they are the witch or what will we do to them ah. oh, we, is it that we run away from them or we decide to say let's stone them to death we will do something we will take an adverse you know times to see what god did with Israel. One time he had to send them 70 years into exile because of what? Idolatry. May our lives not be tantamount to idolatry in the name of the Father. Search me. Look at my heart deep within. Is there any disobedience? Is there any misconduct? Is there any troublemaking? Because you must be popular, you make trouble. Or she must be popular, she makes trouble consistently. The wordness. Is there any defiance, bold disobedience inside your heart? Whatever it is, God is saying that it is rebellion. And he wants us to cry out to him regarding that. Disobedience. Non-conformity to the things that we have been asked to do even in this assembly starting from here reading your bible on a daily basis seeing what god says you should not do and yet doing them you see i did not list some of those things because they are obvious and we have been told about them several times over in this church but you can search your heart this morning by the power of the holy spirit and say father search me let your search light beam upon my heart revealing anywhere there's any disobedience anywhere there's any rebellion anywhere that there is anything that contradicts the will of god anywhere where god is seeing you as a witch or practicing witchcraft this morning god says read your hearts of them god says we should read our hearts of them that's what god wants us to read our hearts of this morning every disobedience every rebellion every spirit of witchcraft i want you to pray god help me to hate rebellion like i hate witchcraft i'm sure nobody wants to be called a witch neither does anybody wants to be labeled you know an idolater in our midst <laughs> I ask, I pray that you will open your mouth and really pray and tell the Lord that it is not when I'm really dancing and waving to the Lord and God is saying, ah, that one is a witch because she or he is disobedient. Because he or she is obstinate, hard neck, refusal to take correction, not conforming, making trouble, waywardness. What is it inside your own life? Maybe this morning we're not even mentioning the obvious sins. But those sins are submerged in it because when you're wayward, then you can do anything. A thief, 
that person can actually be an adulterer or adulterer or a fornicator whatever it is that is inside the heart of any one of us that is that god can list you and say you are a witch you are rebellious it is time for you to deal with that and please let's make sure we are dealing with it open your mouth and talk to the god make sure you are dealing with it don't just ignore it don't wait for the time when we say let's pray for our issues and then we begin to really jump now is the time because if we do not correct anything called rebellion then that means we will still remain dry and old in god's presence we will still remain unproductive in his presence yet we are in his presence god forbid Reke ma su tali bari ba shata la kabosh ma segege rababa ma yekeke ra kabosh ma su tali raka ma tali bar rabosh tali gaga ma segege ma su tali ma rebosh tali gaga father read me read every member of this assembly read us of any form of rebellion. Father, whether they have just started a small disobedience, little disobedience, graduating, Father God, even to stubbornness and graduating ultimately to rebellion. God, each of these stages you hate. Therefore, we pray for ourselves today. We ask, oh God, that you will take away rebellion from our hearts, from our lives, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Reboshta liga gagaga. Okay, Father, help us to hate rebellion as witchcraft is hated even in our society. Help us, please open your mouth and pray that you will hate rebellion as witchcraft is hated in our society. You will not be a rebel, you will not be one that disobeys. You will not be one whose heart is stony, whose heart is callous, that does not have feeling. That does not, you know, there's nothing that is said that can come on to the heart of that, that makes sense to the heart of that person. This morning, Father, we come against every form of rebellion. We hate it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like us to stand up and pray, please, so that we will not just be muttering words. Let's pray and pray with all seriousness. We're going to pray for our youth and our children that they will not engage in any sin of rebellion. And I want you to take that seriously because they are the future of tomorrow. They are that bud that will grow to become a blossom that will finally becomes the ripe fruit and another generation like we had this morning. I want us to pray and ask that God drive away any seed of rebellion. In fact, kill any seed of rebellion in the heart of any youth and our children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Makeba Shatali. Father, we cry out to you as a church this morning, as a family this morning, because we know that Lord, the enemy tries on every side to do the things that he wants to do, but we agree today in your presence under the word of God, having read it and understood it, that you hate rebellion. And therefore, Father God, doesn't matter the age, whether child or old or young. Father, today we choose to pray. We have prayed for ourselves. We pray for our children. Drive away rebellion. Drive away every form of, oh God, witchcraft in the heart of our children. Drive it away, Lord. Let him not find a place. Lord, drive it away in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rekema shetali kabos, maruba shatale keke, rakabosh, masatale, marabosh, masedege, make, in Jesus mighty name we pray we're going to pray and say Lord any youth or out and pray in the name of Jesus Rabosh Tali Gaga Makesh Taleke Ragabosh Masu Tali Kabosh Shekege Father, any youth, any child that has embarked on any journey of rebellion, Father, or any journey of, of, of disobedience, any journey, Father God, of insubordination, of any journey of cold-heartedness, a heart 
that has developed callous. Ah, Baba, we pray today, but in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, let it be terminated. In the name of Jesus, Robosh, the leader, certainly, Father, we terminate that journey of rebellion in the heart of God, of God's children, in this place, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When children, Father God, of rebels have been mentioned, ours will never be amongst them. Our youth will not be amongst them. In the name of Jesus, Rebosh Masatalios Ragaga Yagamosh Taligaga Rebosh Talibaba. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray for them again and say, Father, as many who have gone a little bit of mileage on this journey of rebellion, Lord, we snatch them back. In the name of Jesus, we want our church to be full of children and youth who know and love the Lord and who obey the things of them back. The Bible says for some, snatch them back as though you were snatching them back from fire. My game has certainly every youth, every child in this assembly. Father, they might not be here today, but we stand in their behalf as parents, as oh God, aunties and uncles, and we pray for them and ask, oh God, as grandfathers fathers, as great grandfathers in this assembly, that every child that has embarked on this journey and have traveled some extent, Father, we snatch them back. In the name of Jesus, Rebosh, Masegege, Ege, Marika Bosh, Taligaga, Yaka, Mareke, Masata, Ligaga, Rege, Mashete, Legege, Marabosh, Talagaga, Masegege, Father, we snatch them back. In the name of Jesus, we terminate that journey of, oh God, rebellion. We we snatch them back in the name of Jesus. We terminate that journey of rebellion. We bring them back. We bring them back in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ into your presence where they will hear, see, and obey and do the things that they did at first in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yegema setele rabosh taligaga reke ma soto legabosh reke ma sutele in the name of Jesus in Jesus mighty name we pray. We are still going to pray for ourselves and our children and our youth together. You are going to pray for your heart. My heart must not be cold. My heart must not be callous. That means something, a thick skin grows over it. You know how the, 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 the knee of a camel can be? Very thick. And so he might not even feel it when he steps on a pin or he kneels on a pin. But you want hearts that are sensitive in God's presence. Please pray for yourself. Pray for your, a heart that is callous. God, take it away from me. A cold heart. A heart that does not respond to God. A heart that cannot abide in his presence. A heart that does not take correction. A heart that does not take instruction. Father, take it away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Every coldness in our hearts. Every hard heartness. Every indifference. Father, every hard heart. Lord, today we say, let them be taken away. Every insensitivity. Let them be taken away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you because we know you will do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to pray and say, God will remain in your presence. That's the prayer. God, I want to remain and abide in your presence. You know, we have talked about two types of rods. The one that abided in God's presence and budded and blossomed. But there's one that abides in God's presence and remains dry, old, no effect, no change. That shall not be you. That shall not be me. Please open your mouth and say, Lord, I remain in your presence. Lord, I will remain in your presence. I will remain in your presence. Doesn't matter what is happening around me. I remain, Lord, in your presence. Lord, I remain in your presence. Every member of this assembly, as we cry out to God, a place where, Father God, my life will become what you want it to be. I remain, Lord, in your presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Certainly, none shall Father be in your presence and become or remain dry. Father God, no fruit, remain dry, remain old, remain unchanged. That 
that will not be our lot any longer. That will not be my lot. Lord, let there be a change. Let it constantly, each time and access your presence, let there be a change. Cause me to feel the impact. Help me to know that I have entered into your presence consistently. Help me to remain there, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 21. We want to ask the Lord to do the things that he did with the rod of Aaron in our lives. We want to ask him and say, God, do a new thing. Something unusual, something uncommon. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 21 says, For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Perazim. He will be angry as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. We want God to do his awesome work in our midst today. We want God to do his unusual act in our midst today. You might ask, but by, by venture you have forgotten what happened in Perazim. It was about David. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 20, he inquired of the Lord, shall I go to fight Philistine? He fought them and he won them. He won them so mightily that he said that it was like water breaking through. May there be a breakthrough for that warfare that you have been fighting for a long time in the name of Jesus. Again, he says, may God be angry as he was at the valley of Gibeon. What happened in the valley of Gibeon? It was Joshua fighting in behalf of the Gibeonites again. When five kings of the Amorites came together and attacked these little people, they said that they were strong, they wanted to harness their strength, but they didn't because they had signed a treaty with Israel. What did they say? Let's go and attack them. And God did awesome work. In fact, that day when the battle was like they continued to fight the battle, what did Joshua say? He said, son, stand still. And the son stood still. That's in, um, it, it's, it's in Joshua chapter 10. I can't find it. It's in Joshua chapter 10. Chapter 10 verse, um, verse 12. It says that then Joshua spoke to the Lord in that day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still over Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Aijalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped till the people had revenged upon their enemies. And then it went on to say, Is this not written in the book of Joshua? As the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day, another 24 hours, the sun stood still. Usually the sun rises and goes and then we go to sleep and wake again and this. The day the sun does not rise, I'm sure we'll be very worried. And if you go to some countries where they don't, have, they don't get sunshine early, you might wake up and be wondering, where, ah, what happened today? Why is the place dark? Just wait for some minutes, the sun will come. But this time around, this sun did not go down. Why? God had to fight a cost. God will fight your cost today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want, us, I want you to say to the Lord, Father, do your awesome work. You turn to that Isaiah chapter 28 verse 21. It says the Lord did an awesome work. The Lord did unusual act. Ask the Lord. God, do an unusual act. It was an unusual act. It was an unusual act. If you see what we well, what is on the board on, on, the, on the slide earlier on, it's an unusual act to find birds, to find flowers, and to find fruits, ripe fruits together at the same time on one road. Today, Lord, do an unusual act. Do that which is uncommon, that which nobody can ever explain away. The Bible says, as God did it in the time of the imperialism, as God did it in Gibeon, God do it again today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today being the 20th of May, 2018, you knew that now we are going to consider, oh God, that the road of Aaron miraculously budded. Today, Lord, do a new work in the life of your people. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you did, Father God, with Aaron's rod. Do, oh God, a new work in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do an awesome work in the name of Jesus. Do the unusual in the name of Jesus. Rebosh talakabosedege. Masiteli kabosh masiteli. Father, do the unusual. Lord, do the unusual. Do the unusual. Do the unusual in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Maybe you don't understand what is unusual. When a process that has taken ages suddenly happens in one day, that is an unusual act. Like it happened with Zacharias. For years, he kept going to the house of the Lord. Each time he kept going ministry, when it was his own division to minister, there was one day. Ha, may that day be day today for you in the name of Jesus. Are you going to talk to the Lord again and say, God, add great speed to a process in my life. And by venture, you are here and there's something that has delayed or there's something coming late, whether for you or a child or a member of the family, ask the Lord this day. And I wish that you would really stand up and pray because we are in the presence of the Lord. Talk to the Lord and say, Father, add great speed. Every delay, anything that has stayed that is old and dry, anything that seems as if at the end has come to me, Lord, add great speed to it today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Reke ma sata liga bosh, raka ma seta liga bosh, ma regege ma soto le, ma ribosh ta liga gaga ga, eke ma raga bosh, ma seta le, kakra basha ta liga bosh. In the name of Jesus, Lord, add great speed in Jesus' name to every process in the life of somebody in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, do it, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're going to say, Lord, bring an end to. Lord, bring a resolution, an answer to a long-term issue. That was what happened. They had been fighting. They had been no more worrying. They had, they, this thing had continued on and, and God was tired. He said, I want to resolve this thing now and forever. God wants to do something in your life today. For because you have get, gotten rid and removed the clutter on your path, even in the presence of God, you're going to talk to the Lord and say, Father, Lord, bring a resolution. Bring a solution to a long-term issue in my life, in the life of somebody in this assembly, whether you know the person or you are that person. Father, an end must come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Like you did, Father God, at all God, Mount Perazim, like you did in the valley of Gibeon. Lord, bring an end to a long-term issue. You can mention it to the Lord. You know yourself. You know the things that you have been trusting, waiting on the Lord for, for a long time. God says, I'm going to bring an end to it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are praying them short, short. You can go home and pray them. We want to talk to the Lord. Lord, settle a contention over my life. That was all God did. God settled the contention forever. We never heard about it again. That word was brought and kept in God's presence. If anybody wanted to rebel, they would just bring it out and say, ah, that's the end. So you're going to talk to the Lord. Father, settle a long-term argument over my life. Any contention upon my life, over my life, people, things have been arguing, situations have been arguing. Father, settle it in the name of Jesus. Madabosh, masetani, kabosh, maragabosh, masetani, gaga, raga, mashetani, ragabosh, masetani, marabosh, tani, gaga. Father, settle every long-term argument, contention over my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Marabosh, tani, gaga, gaga. Yes, Lord, settle, settle. In the name of Jesus, could it be a case of a disease that, oh God, is terminal? Could it be a case, Father God Almighty, of an individual that the enemy has ganged up against? Father, today, in your presence, we settle.
into this matter. Makebosh, Masatale, Kabosh, Reke, Masutale. Lord, settle it, settle it, settle it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. But just pardon me for a while. We still have to pray that prayer. Potential sickness and disease have been ravaging your body. And that is the contention. They have been contending for your life. Pioneer Pastor told us a long time ago that sickness is instrumental death. No matter what it is, no matter how small it presents itself, that is why today you will pray for yourself. You will pray for members of your family. You will talk to the Lord. Not only sickness, God, I don't know what it is that can be contending for somebody's life, but I know that a number of issues are contending, particularly in this time in which we live. Please open your mouth and pray. Lord, put an end to that contention. Put an end to that argument. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, put an end. In the name of Jesus. Lord, put an end. Lord, put an end. Lord, put an end. End. Lord, put an end in the name of Jesus Christ. Settle it once and for all. Every argument, every contention over my life, over the life of any member of my family, over my husband, over all oh God, every member of my family, over the church of God in this place. Put an end to the contention of Satan. Put an end to that contention in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. It was a resurrection, so to say, of that road back to life. You're going to pray for yourself, Lord Reviver. I ask for revival. Revival does not have to do with spiritual. Yes, spiritual revival, number one. And then your body will search back to life. Your business will search back to life. Your career, that terminated educational growth that just stopped suddenly because you say, ah, I am not going forward any longer. Whatever it is, that righteous desire, that thing that God has put in your path to accomplish, and yet it has stopped somewhere. You're going to say, it has become old, it has become decayed, it's like it's not going to have life again. Father, reviver, bring it back to life. Cause there to be a restoration. I ask for a restoration. In the name of Jesus, I ask for bring him back to life, like that dead road come, came back to life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We came as so to lay, but let there be fruitfulness again, let there be restoration, like Aaron's word did in your presence as we present ourselves in your presence today again. Lord, let there be restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. We came as shed to lake a in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. And God puts one word in my heart. I don't know whether that belongs to you or who. God says embarrassing situations. And if you know that your case is embarrassing situation, I'd like to, I will plead with a pioneer pastor to come and pray for us when the people have come. But I'd like to ask if you know and you want that thing to be what God did to the road of Aaron to happen to your own life today you will come back and say father I need your intervention any case of any embarrassing situation we will not mention anyone you know for yourself you just feel that it is an embarrassing situation you can step forward if you want God to touch your life I know you have been praying but just step forward just step to the Lord as you begin to talk to the Lord this situation is an embarrassing situation sometimes people don't even know about it sometimes it is only you that knows about that situation. Ah, as God stopped the woman with the issue of blood, God stopped it. It was an embarrassing situation. Probably she had an order around her. Father, an embarrassing situation in the life of your people. Father, an end must come to it today. Like, oh God, the contention over oh God who was going to be high priest. Father God came to an end. Let that oh God situation, let it come to an end today. Marebosh, Tali Gaga, Ege, Masete Ligabosh, Raga, Masegege, Rebosh, Mas just continue to talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord it's an embarrassing situation. I stand amazed in your presence. Oh. Just go ahead, keep talking to the Lord. Rebosh, Tali Gabosh, Masegege.